So what I firmly believe based on my own remote viewing experiences um, and my own research going places is, uh, is that humans are indeed hybrids. I mean, there's a, there's a genetic missing link in our evolution. And I truly believe that that genetic missing link is interdimensional beings coming in and advancing us. And I don't think it was some grandiose plan, um, maybe at some level, it was more so a selfish plan um, on the, the, the level of those beings to come here to <laughs> basically create this like sa- slave-like species right. who can just do their labor for them. Now, right. at a, hi- a much higher level, um, there was a grandiose plan. There was a, a prophecy. There is still a prophecy. Um, and this prophecy comes from the Galactic Federation of Light. And it essentially states that there was going to be a species that was manufactured, okay, not organically evolved, but manufactured um, in a sense that all, all, some of the highest vibrational, so highest dimensional beings in the right. universe, and some of the lowest dimensional beings in the universe would all splice their DNA into this one species, and that species would essentially be this peace treaty. And mm-hmm. the reason why there needs to be a peace treaty is because uh, there's giant galactic wars going on, wars, multiple, all across the universe. <coughs> Welcome to Far Out with Faust, everybody. I am Faust Chicho, in case you didn't know, and today I'm joined by Elizabeth April. Let me tell you about this incredible woman and what she's been up to. Elizabeth is an intuitive channel. She's a psychic. She's a medium. She's an artist. She's an entrepreneur, and she's also a trailblazing paradigm shifter, (laughs) which is what she's most noted for, I think. Um, and I am so excited to have her on the show. Elizabeth, thank you so much for beaming in and making some time for us. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm very excited for our conversation today. Me too. I, I, I was just telling you, I don't think I've ever had so many questions for one person. <laughs> Let's see if we get to a half of them, we'll be happy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I saw your interview way back with, with Ruben. Well, actually, it was, what was it, about three years ago now? What, what year yeah. was it? It was 2019, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. My God, even so, <laughs> if you guys haven't, I don't know how you've been watching this show and you haven't tuned into that show yet, uh, but inter- Interviews with Ed Ed um, is a show that is, two seasons are on Gaia and there's a third season on Vimeo, but check it out if you haven't seen it. If you love channelers and channel material. Um, I first um, saw Elizabeth when she was being interviewed by Ruben Langdon, who was one of my first guests on my podcast. And uh I have to say, Elizabeth, like, you know, you were pretty prophetic, even in what you were talking about with Ruben in 2019. I mean, I'm just like, wow, you probably weren't so surprised at all at the events of 2020, and <laughs> what they did, were you? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I really wasn't. I've been waiting for for all of that for quite some time. And, you know, I have a really kind of short, funny story. Um, it was... Christmas time of 2019. And, uh, you know, I've been living in Los Angeles, I flew back home to Canada to like spend some time with family for Christmas. And, you know, not every member of my family accepts what I do, especially the very Catholic side. And so we were all sitting around at the, uh, the dinner table. And, you know, I don't know how this came up in conversation, but I made this very casual comment that I said, you know, 2020 is going to change the world forever. And, uh, and my aunt, you know, she, she looked at me, you know, gave me this funny look and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she told me uh, just like a year ago, she's like, you know, I went to bed that night thinking, who, what is she saying? This is crazy. Why would she ever make a comment like this? Like 2020 is going to change the world forever. You know what I mean? Like she really went to bed contemplating that statement. And then she's like, then when 2020 happened, you know, I was absolutely mind blown at the fact that you predicted it. You know what I mean? You, you knew that something was going to go down. So (laughs) it is, it is. uh, And even in my 2020 predictions that I released in, I think, uh, December of 2021, I said, there's going to be war, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of things. So um, it's, it's interesting having people look at those, those videos and say, Oh, my God, you know, you predicted the whole Ukraine Russian thing to yeah. a T. Um, 
even though predictions aren't my thing. I, I don't like uh, right. doing predictions because there's an infinite number of timelines that I'm a right. firm believer in quantum mechanics and, and that there's, you know, everything is happening simultaneously. So it's very next to impossible to predict these things. But ultimately, the old world is ending and I am right. super pumped about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, so I want to give everyone a little bit of a background. Um, I, I I can't spend too much time on it because I have too many questions for you. Totally. But, <laughs> but I, you know, I know that you, you had a, a pretty remarkable childhood because you, um, un unlike I think maybe the majority of channelers who I've spoken to, you, you, you began having a lot of different um, experiences with different um, energies and ETs when you were a child, and and that kind of grew into. Um, a, a bunch of what you would put under the ESP category, you know, that you experienced. And um, so that's a, a little bit of background for um, everyone who's listening. But then, you know, there's some things that happened that were more, that were very pivotal. You know, I know that growing up Catholic, which I have as well, I was an altar boy for uh, eight years unscathed, but uh, you know, I was, <laughs> I had a twin brother, too identical, and they would make us serve all the the holiday masses so that we look like bookends up there. It was <laughs> it was it was terrible. We hated it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so I know that um, some of those things that happened to you when you were a child that you know probably were not exactly accepted um, by family members and by people in this you know that Catholic community. Um, that's safe to say, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, just like the kind of short version of, of the rest of the story is around the age of 10, I shut down my abilities uh, just because it was, I was the weird kid. I wanted to fit in, you know, be normal. Yeah. And then I got really involved into sports, which is kind of funny now looking at going from a very metaphysical reality to a very physical reality, getting involved in sports, which is, of course, going to be very grounding for anyone. Um, and then at like 14, 15, 16, just went into a heavy depression, lots of anxiety, questioning everything. And I felt once again, like this outcast of, you know, I'm going to my friends in, in high school saying, do you ever just wonder, like, what are we doing here? Like, what's the point of all this? And they would just give me these funny looks and say, let's drive, like, we can drive, like, let's party, you know, like, yeah. it was just such a simple kind of existence. Um, and then a lot of that questioning led me to go to the authority figures of this society. So I went to um, my friend's parents, my own parents. I went to high school teachers. I went to counselors, therapists, doctors. Uh, I even talked to a priest. All right, cool. So you're the guy. You're the authority figure. What's what's what is this? What is the meaning of life? Tell me, please. I'm right. I'm ready. And every single time, I was just met with blank stares and disappointing answers. Um, and so it wasn't until I was 16 and my dad, who was actually more of the Catholic one in my parents and also an engineer, which is a weird combo, but also a very old soul, um, he studied past life regression and read all the Brian Weiss books and whatever he could get his hands on. And so he's like, hey, would you be interested in doing a past life regression? And maybe this is gonna help you with your questions at 16. I'm like, perfect. So I didn't know what to expect. Um, we went into a regression, obviously I experienced, you know, other lifetimes, right. uh, a lot of other lives where I was shamans or healers or channelers. And, um, and that's what really opened me up to, oh my goodness, reincarnation is real. I'm not just 16. Thank God. I'm not just mm -hmm. this. And two, time is an illusion. It's simultaneous. How is it possible that in an hour and a half at the age of 16, I can explore five different entire past lives? Like what, right. you know, so what more is there? And that really opened the uh, can of worms for me to start exploring past life regression. So I ended yeah. up copying my dad's regression notes into my own notebook. And two years later, when I went away to university, that's how I ended up making friends. I put as many people as I could into a regression, which is probably you know, <laughs> not good because I was so untrained, but I yeah. was able to do it. And um, very irresponsible of me, but it was, you <laughs> there, know. There are worse things <laughs> happening, though. Don't worry. <laughs> exactly. And so... Um, 
And when I went away to university and I started to do this for others, I realized that not everyone was able to let go of their ego mind, their present mm -hmm. moment, and get into these altered states. So I started to think to myself, is it possible for me to put myself into a trance-like state to explore their past lives? Mm -hmm. And I started to do that. And I started to regress myself and say, all right, I'm going to explore my own past lives. I'm going to explore, you know, other states. What if I can go back and see who Jesus was and what he really did? And maybe ancient Greece or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Atlantis, maybe, you know. And so I started to do all these things and go all these places and explore ancient human history and, uh, you know, stepping into remote viewing and astral traveling mm -hmm. and lucid dreaming and telepathy. So all my abilities started coming back to me. But if you ask me if aliens exist, I'd say, um, I mean, yeah, there's got to be something else right. out there in the universe, but pff, why would they be here? Why would they bother with us? We are right. one of billions, trillions of terrestrial planets out there. There's no way they would spend their resources, time, energy to be here. Like, right. I really considered us this ant-like species, you know, we're like cavemen of, right. of the, the galaxy. Um and so then, of course, you know, I go away to attend a silent meditation retreat. That's right. You went to a vis, uh, vis, yep, Vipassana. 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 Yep. Uh, which is something I did in a past life. So I wanted to re-experience it. And on the second night of meditation, I ended up getting abducted by interdimensional beings. Um, and it wasn't a really great abduction. It was quite fear-based. But right. it opened up that other can of worms. Oh, my God. Not only are they real but they're here and they're interacting with us. So all of a sudden my curiosity just expanded tenfold and I had all the questions, who are they? What are they doing here? Why are we important? You know, mm -hmm. what is the whole point of them even abducting us to begin with? And, uh, and so that was back when I was like 18, 19 years old. Wow. Um, shortly thereafter, I was introduced to the Galactic Federation of Light, which is like a whole other thing. And mm -hmm. since then, I've been unpacking these giant truths and trying to understand the, the whole point of why we're so special, why we're so important, why we're going through this shift at this time. I'm 29 now. It's been a, a solid 10 plus years of uh, wow. exploring, experiencing, journeying, doing conferences. You know, I have my first book out so it's like it's been this kind of slow trickle of putting all the pieces together and it's really hard when someone asks me like who are you and what do you do I'm like all right where <laughs> do I is. begin oh like it, there's there's no label that yeah. quite defines me like I really like paradigm shifter I really like truth seeker because mm -hmm. I'm here to not just look at aliens not just look at spiritual right. you know ascension not just look at quantum physics but bring all of these fields of study together Right. And I, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, it, you're so easy to listen to, because you, you do bring all of those things together in a way that um, I haven't heard many people even attempt to do, let alone do so with such fluidity and, and lucidity. Um, so it's really refreshing. You know, I was, I've been just kind of diving into as much of your videos going back and then coming forward with them uh, closer to present day recently. And it's just really, you know, you, you have an incredible amount of, of wisdom for a 29 year old, if I do so say. You know, within those 10 years, I've done a lot of work with like uh, individuals who have crossed over to the other side. So a lot of like, you know, life after death sort of stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and really like exploring that and experiencing that and even helping spirits cross over. So that's kind of, that was one of my big questions back in the day is like, what happens after death? And then what happens in the interim? You know, what happens in the in-between yeah. lifetimes? Um, and, and I truly believe, and this may be controversial to some as well, that, you know, we can be plants, we can be animals, we can be insects, we can be, you know, people really don't realize that, you know, your dog is actually just an incarnated human <laughs> from another life, you know, it's just, yeah. we don't really kind of link those together. Um, and so what I've discovered is the soul in the interim between incarnations uh, gets to make a choice of like, where do you want to incarnate right. next? Is it a plant? Is it an animal? Is it on another planet in another galaxy? 
And what lessons do you have to learn? And what karma do you have to clear, right? So um, now one big misconception that people believe about planet Earth, yeah, that's a prison planet. We've got the karma system, screw karma. Yeah. But it's also like there's that's karma is a universal truth. There, right. There's no getting away from it. Every action, every thought, every reaction creates an energetic ripple. And that energetic ripple has to bounce off something and come back to you. Um, and there are many ways to actually clear and neutralize your karma, which I definitely talk about and go into as well. Certainly. But but that's what we're here to do in this lifetime is we are put we put ourselves into a specific body. We contract certain events, large events to happen in our life, whether they be good, bad, ugly, to mm -hmm. either clear the karma from the past or to learn a lesson that you have yet to learn. Um, so those are kind of the two reasons why we incarnate and the two main reasons why we are, uh, you know, here at this time. Right. And then I guess there's a third reason, which is what are you here to give back? You know, it's like, this is kind of what you're here to do for yourself is to either learn a lesson, move forward or clear karma, move forward. But also how can you take everything that you already have learned and give it back to the collective um, in, in yes. a service to others type of type of way? And the, the, the more you find your path, um, you know, it, to use a kind of cliched phrase, but your path in the light, the more you heal and, uh, and f find that integrative state of wholeness, then I think it, you know, I mean, I think of my journey to this conversation and, and then the answer to um, how those two contracts collide eventually, it becomes clear to me, you know. Um, because I, because I've, I've found my path through, I guess you could say clearing karma. Um, and I think that there's a big misconception about karma in general. People think that it's like, this. okay, there's karma for me right now. <laughs> I've got one too. Sorry about that. So I gotta, Lilu, go investigate such a guard dog. <laughs> sorry about that um she doesn't do that um you know people think that karma is like this like like you're saddled with it it's almost like this this yeah. permanent debt that you can't get rid of and right. then it becomes something that is out of our control and no longer our responsibility yeah. so that's my 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 big thing with people kind of using karma as not an excuse but the thinking about it is off you know it's i don't yeah. think it is that thing when it comes down to identity, uh, we have to think about patterns and programming, right? So of course we can think about ancestral programming, societal programming, familial programming in childhood, you know, and a lot of us just take on this programming. We don't realize we're being taught anything or programmed yeah. anything. And, and we just become the thing that society expects us to become. And that can be so limiting. Like, say, for example, if you're a doctor, what a huge, crazy label to have. I'm a doctor and this is who I am and this is what I do. And, you know, this is my identity. And then you lose your job and you're like, oh, my God, who am I now? I don't know who I am because I don't have the label. Um, and, and so that can be very difficult. So we have to take a look at what are we attached to that we feel like we can't live without? Um, and what are you willing to let go of? Uh, what are you not willing to let go of? And you really have to pay attention to what you're not willing to let go of. So if someone, if I ask someone on the street, I'm like, what are you not willing to let go of? What, what do you just, you know, you need in your life to survive? Coffee. I need coffee every day in the morning. If I don't have my coffee, you know. Right. And so that's not freedom because what if you find yourself uh, stranded at an airport, all the coffee shops are closed down and mm. you're, you're screwed. You don't have your, the thing that you feel like you need. Can you survive? Who are you without coffee? And when, when I think the, the most freeing that we can be is to wake up every morning and to say, who do I want to be today? What do I want to drink today? What, uh, you know, if you're like, I identify as a dainty female and I'm always vulnerable and I'm the damsel in distress and I need a big, strong man in my life. You know, it's like there are so many layers and attachment yeah. and there's so much that you're putting on yourself to be that person that you perceive you need to be for validation, for security, for confidence. Right. Um, and when you strip back those layers, like that's truly what the awakening is. It's like, who am I? And dissolving every aspect of who you think you are.
Yeah. And when you start to dissolve all of that, you start to get to the real core of who you are, which is actually nothing at all. You are nothing. You are none of it. You're not your hair. You're not your clothes. You're not your body. <laughs> you're not your job. bank account. Yeah. You're not your job. You're not your, your, your family. You're, you're not any of it. And when you can sit down truly and be alone, like really, truly be alone, not social media scrolling, not watching TV, but really be alone with yourself and be okay with that. Yeah. That's when you know you are centered into your authentic self. And I, I want to mention one thing that's important to, for some people to hear what I noticed a long time ago is throughout the awakening journey, you know, you strip back these human identifiers, okay, human identifiers, and then you step into the spiritual world, and it's all so exciting and liberating, and, and there's modalities and Reiki and energy work and crystals and all these cool things, and then what you don't realize is you haven't actually fully let go of your need to attach to something, right. but you don't realize that you haven't let that go. So you actually switch off your, uh, you switch out your human identifiers for your spiritual identifiers. And then you create something called the spiritual ego. And you're like, I'm pure because I'm wearing my Reiki infused. Uh, my quartz. My quartz crystal stone. And, you know, and it's like, okay, I get it. Like, cool. Crystals right. are great energy, but like, you're, you're, you don't need that. You don't need that. Like you don't, you know. And so yeah. there's also this other, you know, energy of stripping back those layers too, to say, you don't need any of the spiritual either, because you are spiritual, you are innately an energy body, right. you know, you don't need anything to increase your energy or change your energy other than your focus and your intention. So it's important to understand that there is going to be attachment there, even when you shift away from your old previous identifiers, make sure that you're not just creating new identifiers, because it's safe for you to have right. a blanket of security based on some sort of identity. It's a constant self assessment. And, 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 <laughs> and you know, kind of being, I don't want yeah. to use the word brutal, but you have to be you have to yeah. be really honest, honest. with yourself, yeah. um, in order to do a true self assessment. And the problem is, <laughs> you know, the, the, the self-assessments we, we, that are easier to do are very superficial, you know, like, well, this is, you know, I mean, love and light is a lot better than where you came from. Yeah. But right. you're bringing all the old programming and patterns from it. You're going to bring them right into your new, you know, you're going to end up having an argument with this people who are scheduling your meditation circle. I promise <laughs> you, it's not going to stop just because you switch. You know what I mean? I see yeah, it all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Like I know I shouldn't be triggered by it because I should be pretty neutral and, you know, I'm very aware of my dips and valleys and ups and downs, mm -hmm. my humanness, um, which I love actually. And, um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's quite frustrating because they don't see that yeah. they're actually stuck in the same vibration but they've up leveled their attachments, right? right. So, so, you know, same thing with the uh, plant medicine. Oh, this plant medicine will help me have an ego death and it will, it'll get me there. And I, and I get it. And I think plant yeah. medicine is a beautiful technology that was absolutely given to us by extraterrestrials. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind about I feel that. the same way. But it's not the end of the journey. No, that is not, not the all, no. that is that is not the end all to be all. That's not going to get you to where you need to go because ultimately you need to get yourself there. You That's know, right. and, um, and and really the experience you have work. there is going to be yeah. inc incredibly varied depending on you know if you're if you're going as a, if this is a, some kind of hopefully a solution for you you're then you're going for the wrong reasons you know what I yes. mean like this has to be. A, truly a compliment and an experience that you go with with a very strong intention you know to to try to aid yourself in this process it can't be like well i hope this is the one that does it you know because it's yeah. never going to be that exactly know? it's it's so similar to like chasing alcohol well like maybe if i have one more beer i'll be happier you know it's like yeah. there's really not a whole lot of difference to chasing plant medicine to chasing you know and so um, a couple of years ago, I, I did a bunch of channeling on um, the crystalline grid around planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I did a bunch of channeling on the portals, um, you know, say Sedona vortexes. I did channeling on um, the crystals and I did channeling on plant medicine. So each of these things all has a consciousness in its own right. Yeah. And so I don't know why it's just that whole year. It was like, you know, hitting up all these like, let's say uh, external tools for self-actualization. Okay. Right. And, uh, and it wasn't until much after, like long, long after where I realized 
uh, that, I, that the whole year was just channeling those things. Oh, wow. And, um, and each time I channeled one of these tools that humanity has, uh, every single time the consciousness of that tool came back to say, we're tired, we're mm -hmm. tired because people are showing up to these Sedona vortexes or to the ayahuasca expecting for us right. to heal them, expecting for us to give them an experience, but they're not doing the work. Right. And so what's happening is we've got these incredible tools that are kind of like um, almost like seatbelts for us. You know, they're they're yeah. they're helpful tools on our journey. But we're at a point now where we've we've got to take it on ourselves. Yeah. We have to take full responsibility for our own ascension. We, right. we we have to stop just showing up and expecting. And that's really the the generation that we're in right now. Generation right. expectations like, OK, I'm ready for my ego death. I'm ready for my <laughs> awakening. I'm ready for my I, I signed up. I'm going. <laughs> I'm here, yeah. you know, it's like, go within, stop looking outside of yourself, right. because it's a very draining energy for the planet as well. We've yes. been doing that for too long. It's time to give back, find it within, and then give it back <laughs> to the planet, yeah. give it back to the portals of work, give it back to the plant medicines, respect and honor them for what they have done for us, but realize that everything that they can do, you already have. I, you know, I love hearing you talk about this phenomenal, uh, technology that we call human beings um, and, and all these uh, amazing things that our bodies do and can do and, and where they come from, you know, uh, I would love for you to, to talk a little bit about, you know, this, this, you know, I want to say the hybrid vigor of the human being and, and what the origin story is. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, what's really fascinating and uh, simultaneously frustrating in the alien community, because I do speak at a lot of these UFO alien conferences, is that we are still to this day so hung up on um, proving that UFOs are real, that no one is really asking the big questions of, okay, cool, who's flying them? <laughs> and also, why are they here? Like, come on, like, we are literally still so stuck of like, yeah, there's yeah. this, uh, this declassified video of this 1940s dot in the sky, yeah. like, come on, are you serious? You know, it just, it just so beyond frustrating. And so I, you know, I, you know, speak about and do lectures and, and, and present information in, in the, under the assumption that we can all agree that there's something else out there. All right. So then what, you know, what's the next, I really want to fill in what the next steps, why, you know, and how. And so what I firmly believe based on my own remote viewing experiences um, and my own research going places is uh, is that humans are indeed hybrids. I mean, there's a there's a genetic missing link in our evolution, and I truly believe that that genetic missing link is interdimensional beings coming in and advancing us. And I don't think it was some grandiose plan. Um, maybe at some level, it was more so a selfish plan um, on the, the, the level of those beings to come here to mm -hmm. basically create this like slave-like species right. who can just do their labor for them. Right. Now at a, high, a much higher level, um, there was a grandiose plan. There was a, a prophecy. There is still a prophecy. Um, and this prophecy comes from the Galactic Federation of Light. And it essentially states that there was going to be a species that was manufactured, okay? Not organically evolved, but manufactured um, in a sense that all, all, some of the highest vibrational, so highest dimensional beings in the right. universe, and some of the lowest dimensional beings in the universe would all splice their DNA into this one species, and that species would essentially be this peace treaty. And mm -hmm. the reason why there needs to be a peace treaty is because uh, there's giant galactic wars going on, wars, multiple all across the universe and the wars are essentially between the beings who are here for unity consciousness which is hey it doesn't have to be all love and light but like let's just all get along like right. the light can have their side the dark can have their side so like it's it's Definitely. not this 
or this, it's this and this, you know, so that's the unifying side. And then the other side is more of the lower vibrational beings, which is, well, screw unity. If I can take more, uh, right. you know, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to, you know, it's the greedy kind of separation from source sort of service to others or service to self sort of vibe. Right. And so because of these wars, there have been peace treaties. Like you can kind of imagine it as like a written contract, 10,000 year written peace contract in this galaxy between these beings. And every single time these peace treaties have been overwritten, they have been completely squashed uh, yeah. and, and thrown to the side. Why? Because these beings, these lower vibrational beings, they just want more. They want more resources. They want more power. They Sounds want like more some control. People... That we know on the yeah. planet <clears throat> exactly yeah. and so what's fascinating what makes this planet and this civilization so different is um we're not just a contract we're not just a piece of paper we are the children essentially mm. of some of the highest vibrational and lowest vibrational beings in the universe it took many years for the galactic federation to finally disclose this information to me because they said humanity just wasn't ready for it it was actually just back in 2017 when they finally released this to me and that was seven years of communicating with them wow. you know so it was quite some time and i kept asking and every year they'd be like not yet elizabeth not yet <laughs> like okay <laughs> um and so yeah and so basically because we're the children we have the hybridization we have the dna of the highest vibrational beings which means we have the capacity to do a hell of a lot more than any oh, yeah. other third dimensional be being civilization you know blessing and a curse there. <laughs> it, it, it is but so we've got these higher vibrational uh, abilities, let's say, but we yeah. also have the lowest vibrational abilities, the fight and flight, the survival tendencies, the yeah. greed, you know, and we can very easily get triggered into the lower vibrational stuff. And we can very easily get triggered into the higher vibrational yeah. stuff. So essentially where we're at right now as a civilization is we have a choice and the choice is are we going to access the highest vibrational traits of our DNA or the lowest vibrational ones, you know? And uh, once again, I think we don't actually have to choose. I think we can choose to unify. And when yeah. we can start to see the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension within ourselves and objectively experience all of them because we are multi-dimensional right. beings and we can do that from a very neutral place. That's when we have truly mastered that's all right. of of our being and not just choosing one or the other so that's that's really moving into the quantum space and i think the other misconception is people really believe that the fifth dimension is all love and light and once again it's about the unity within ourselves between right. the shadow side and the brighter side the 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 difference between you know the higher vibrational beings and some of the lower vibrational beings and i heard you speak speak about this before you know about you know, obviously, we know there are pe some people who who believe that there there this reptilian um, infiltration of humanity um, is 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 an actual thing, and that there are shapeshifters, and there are people who believe that that is more on the metaphorical side um, of, of reality. And you know what? I'm sure for those people, both things are true. Um, but you know, I heard you talk a little bit about how. The, when the Anunnaki came um, and create and created this, basically this DNA that we're walking around in, you know, they they did so for very specific reasons, and um, of course, they they were in violation by doing so. And so, I guess my question is like, and it's been a question of mine for a long time, you know, like why were they? I mean, it had to, I guess, been seen as okay we're going to let thing, let them speed things up. Things would have taken this course eventually anyway, but why were they allowed to break the non-interference, um, you know, law when they came and, and started to mess with this, the, the DNA and the evolution here on this planet? Yeah. Okay. Good question. So um, this is actually a very recent, question that I had for the Galactic Federation uh, related to a different matter, but it's the same question of like, mm -hmm. why were they able to basically break that, that non-interference law? 
And uh, what it comes down to, like the, the response that I got just recently was um, the law wasn't broken. And the reason why the non-interference law wasn't broken, which is, it, it made a lot of sense when they explained it, um, this planet and this prophecy of this species on this planet was always prophesized to have the Anunnaki come down. Therefore, it was in the collective contracts of this entire civilization for that to happen. Therefore, it did not actually go against any uh -huh. sort of uh, free will infringement. Same thing with the reptilians um, being here, mixing their DNA with human beings. So, you know, it wasn't just the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki probably kicked it off, you know, as right. they've kicked off tons of evolution around the this galaxy, especially. Um, you know, the Anunnaki are kind of considered in the universe like um like the creator beings but mm -hmm. they don't really give a fuck like they don't care right. like they'll literally just like go to a planet they'll evolve a species to get what they want extract the minerals whatever from the planet and then they'll be like bye no right. zero responsibility which in a <laughs> sense is great that they're not you know maybe slaughtering you know the right. civilization that they created or developed i should say not created but developed um, so, I mean, even the Palladians came from the Anunnaki and doing the exact same thing oh, way wow. long ago. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they are the, a very ancient kind of creator species. And so, um, so after they kind of mixed with human beings, you know, the reptilians came in, the Pleiadians came to planet earth, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, I forget what they're called blue avians, bird, like, uh, you know, right. beings came. I mean, there's like probably 20 plus different species that are intermingled within our DNA. And, and a lot of those were actually very, uh, organically mixed. Some of them right. were of course mixed on the ships and some of them were like, I'm falling in love with a human and we're going to create this weird, you know, right. demi god type of you know being um and so that was kind of more of a natural organic progression in an evolutionary sense and then some of it was was with the the cosmic science right. you could say so yeah so it's it's funny looking at it saying like my biggest question back in the day upon seeing the influence of some of these lower vibrational beings um was like why are the reptilians allowed to be here why are they allowed to 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 mess with humanity yeah. the way that they're doing you know this is not okay like this these are crimes against humanity that that's right. happening and it was a, pretty much the same response many years ago from the galactic federation saying humanity needed to experience the darkest lowest vibrational aspects of ourselves at an individual level brought on by the chaos and confusion and fear of at the societal level um, mm -hmm. to bring that out in us so that we can experience that so that we can make the choice of I don't want to be that I don't want to experience that right. so what more is there and then naturally organically we move into the higher vibrational states which are not manipulated at all and we're like wow this feels a lot better and this is what I choose indefinitely so even mm -hmm. all of the manipulation all of the dark stuff all of the weird twisted you know fear propaganda bullshit it was also all contracted for humanity to go through to get to this point where we're at right now right and I, I i can't help but chuckle a little bit which is it's not a funny matter but i think it's kind of funny that like the dark side especially in the past couple of years has all of these agendas maybe it's a a a depopulation agenda maybe it's um you know a fear-based agenda maybe it's a whatever you know chaos yeah. agenda right and uh, and so with all of these agendas they're actually sticking their own foot in their mouth over because, and over yeah. uh, you know it's like they want to create fear and chaos and yet they're actually helping in the ascension because yeah. it is through this dead end this black hole of fear and chaos where we actually go inward and say None of this resonates. I'm going to stop watching the news. It only gives me anxiety. Right. So what else can I do with my time? Well, maybe I meditate. Maybe I, you know, right. have some self realizations. Get out in nature. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, the, you know, it's it's just kind of ironic how how hard and how desperate they oh are God. right now to create this lower vibrational frequency. When, as a matter of fact, by pushing so hard, they're actually awakening humanity. So to them, I say thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah, true. really. Yeah, it's so true. And the events of the last two years have been, you know, I mean, say what you want. Sure, things may be more polarized, but I'll tell you, undeniably, there are more people aware and yeah. awake than ever before. And, and that I think is really just that 
is just getting started. That fuse has been lit totally. and that, you know, it was burning before, but the more that they push the, you know, the more people are stopping and saying, wait a minute, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all. And then they're taking yeah. a look at what's been in place and they're saying, Hey, wait a minute. People had no idea. People had no yeah. idea before some of the most important things that you can imagine, you know, like, like when you're, if you have children and your ch child is born, what, what happens to them, you know, in that, what, what is the, what's the first thing that they do to that child? And, and then subsequently do, you know, dozens and dozens of more times before they're even two years old. It's like, we don't even know what's going on with ourselves. And, but, but more people now than ever do. And the school systems, which of course are an extension of this, of this mm -hmm. terrible matrix. I mean, I say terrible, but like you just said, it's a, it's a paradox because it's, it's, I guess it's what we need to realize where we have to go. And so it's important, mm -hmm. you know, yep. uh, but you're right. Yep. We should thank it. We should thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's so many lies that eventually people are going to start questioning. And I truly believe that questioning, you know, your own reality and questioning the systemic reality mm -hmm. is, is the gateway to ascension and awakening. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and, and I, I always see that I see like, and I've always been fascinated with, um, you know, the inner, inner earth and how, you know, when I heard you talking about that, I was like, wow, you know, like we, there's so much going on underground on our planet. And most people don't really, you know, think about it. They maybe, maybe they watch a show and about it, but they, but, but I don't think many people realize how much is buried under underneath this the, you know the, the the place that we live on top of the earth i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that yeah for sure so when i started to remote view there's kind of like layers under earth like there are caverns where reptilian beings do exist and live in physical states um there are uh, also tons of underground military bases everywhere all over the planet so that's, that's when fact, i started yeah. Yeah, and I started to remote view all of these places, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of creepy and cool and like, wow, bizarre, and like the shit that the, that the governments are doing are just awful, like horrendous um, in these military bases. And then you go even deeper and you're like, oh my God, there's like a whole other world beneath our world, um, you know. A lot of inner earth, um, I mean, there's different kind of, uh, what, what is it called, like atmospheres or scenes or, right. you know, very similar to our planet and even North America. It's just like you could drive across America and, and literally feel like you're in 10 different countries. Like it's pretty wild. And it's very similar to inner earth. Like there are kind of desert landscapes. There are uh, tropical rainforests. I mean, it's really insane. There's like a whole ecosystem down there. And what I've uh, seen in my remote viewing of inner earth is there's a lot of different species down there. Um, some of them are actually ancient humans who got the call a long time ago to go underground uh, to save themselves from certain apocalyptic type events um, as far as like you know, uh, the great ice age and floods and, and those kind right. of things. Um, but it's just, it's so fascinating to have, you know, kind of like this whole civilization and world beneath us. And then this whole civilization and universe above us. And we're just kind of sandwiched, you yeah, know, and, um, and there's both good and bad below us as well as good and bad above us. And, right. and, and it's like this beautiful dichotomy of really representing the choice that we have to make. And mm -hmm. I truly believe that the choice that humans have to make is also going to make a really profound impact on you know the the below ground and the above ground right. of all of those beings as well and i think it'll you know people are always clamoring for you know open contact and quote the truth and you know it makes me think of that one line from that movie with Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise because you can't handle the truth i mean i think many many people on the planet they want the truth, but that, but I mean, realistically, there's still so much fear in this oh, on this yeah. planet, and it's and it is the number one way to to keep people really, you know, in a state of uh, easily manipulated and you know, kind of it. It fear does all the work for people, yeah. and fear and yeah. fear is, you know, I mean, who said it? JFK said it best. You know, there's really nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is false evidence appearing real. 
when you yeah. realize that you are this you know Im immortal soul that there is no end to you there yeah. that, you know the one thing that you cannot do is the thing you fear most and that is die you know this mm -hmm. this we have a whole culture wrapped around this notion of you know a finite experience when we are infinite and and mm -hmm. so it's it blows my mind um the, the more i i learn and and see people like that we have that we have come to this place um but again i gotta go back to the fact that it's it's changing and you know I, our cultures will change uh, you know people want open contact i think that as soon as we are ready and they and the you know the consciousness of the planet can be kind of gauged in a way that says all right you know i mean let's i'm sure that there's there's so many beings and races waiting to make open contact with earth but right like right now like would you park here i wouldn't park here. <laughs> you know like i mean like if you park the wrong place you're going to get blown to smithereens you'd be 100%. regret ever going 3d you know what i mean like let's get out of here i don't yeah. um i think the most important thing for people in this moment to understand is that there are portals or vortexes everywhere all over the planet you don't have to go to mount shasta or some sacred location <laughs> to yeah. to experience a portal or vortex as a matter of fact some people have uh, vortex is right in the middle of their home and they don't even realize it. And like, I don't know why my home is always so chaotic or I don't know why when I feel something it's amplified, you know, and it's, and it's because of that. And if we're not aware of the vortexes and portals around us, then uh, we are just putting things out there. They're getting amplified right. and they're getting connected to the consciousness grid, you know, and, and it's coming back into your life tenfold. And so if you're having a really terrible day, that terrible day is going to get amplified tenfold. Um, so I guess the way that we can um, feel into is there a vortex around me is how, do, how does it feel in your body? Uh, if you feel like your home, okay, in particular, it's, it's a little bit more rare to have a vortex right in your home, but especially if you have a property or on land, you know, there's going to be small vortexes around you. Um, and then the big ones are like Machu Picchu and, and kind of the well-known sites, ancient sites. Um, and so it's for me anyway, when I come close to a vortex or I'm around a vortex, I actually get a very anxious feeling. I get like these butterflies in my solar plexus chakra. And um, that's typically when a vortex is in a disharmonic uh, energy, which most of them are because there's not a whole lot of people working on the smaller ones. And so uh, really feel into how you feel. Do you feel harmonized? Do you feel disharmonized? And you can actually reharmonize the energy around you, whether you know it's a vortex or not. Um, if it's just disharmonic energy, of course, sage can help, but it really comes down to your intention. And of course, crystals can help too. But if you just put out a bunch of crystals and you don't know why, and you're putting out a bunch of sage and you don't, you don't really have an intention behind it, or you're really scared and you're saging, you know, it's not really you're actually like counterbalancing the fear with the the clearing and you're not really doing much so it's really important that you actually harmonize your space by um, going around and emitting positive frequency. And you don't have to be necessarily a psychic or an empath or a feeler or a clairvoyant or what have you to do this. I do believe we all are all of those things. Um, but something that I used to do in the past when I wasn't as tuned into my abilities was um, I would take some sage and I would go around to each room and I would literally just verbalize as many positive words as I possibly could. Mm. Love, healing, peace, tranquility, calm, uh, balance, you know, abundance, love, yeah. peace. And then you just go over and over and over again. You do that in every single room of your house. And that's going to really clear out any sort of disharmonic energy, but it's also going to like up level uh, the vibration overall of the house. Yes. And if you really just want to focus on abundance um, or clearing or uh, neutrality or whatever, you can really just focus on those set words. And you could do this every day. You could do this once a week. You could do this once a month. Wow. Yeah. But I really recommend that people do this. Once again, you don't have to be totally tuned in to just speak positive words right. of affirmation um, to to really up level the vibration of your your home so that's kind of like that's what i would recommend as far as like working with the energy um, and realizing that um, we can create the energy around us rather than fall victim to the right. energy around us if that makes sense i think sometimes people you know you come into a place that has all this energy and you don't realize um 
that, that you're there, you know, and it's like, oh, well, what's wrong with me? You know, no, there's nothing wrong with you. You may just be picking up on something that is in your environment, but not exactly visible. You know what I mean? Because uh, <laughs> there's always and, more going on than meets the eye. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, coming from LA, we did the same thing. Like my wife and I literally just moved from Los Angeles like a mm-hmm. month ago. And I mean, same thing is like, I didn't realize how much of a hermit I was for four years, not realizing that I put a bubble and a sanctuary energy around my, the, the yeah. tiny condo that we lived in. And when I would step outside of that, it, it would be, okay, now I have to extra protect. Now I have to really like seclude mm-hmm. myself. So I, I spent a lot of that time indoors. Um, and I didn't realize until I got out of that environment where I'm like, wow, um, yeah. it was actually just the energy around me. But I want to mention something, you know, you moving and I I know a lot of people right now who are making big transitions in their Mm -hmm. life, Uh, a lot of people moving away from their relationships, away from their jobs, away from their living situation. And Mm -hmm. when you're in a, uh, when you're at a point in your life, and we all obviously get there multiple times in our life, but when you're at a point of major transition, and I think major transition of like the major uh, foundational pillars of your life, the human pillars Mm -hmm. of your life, um, right before you make this transition, there are so many unknowns. And, you know, the unknowns bring about a lot of fear, right? It's like the fear of the unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. So I have advice for people and and you as well, who are kind of in the middle of this transition. Instead of going from your old reality state into a new reality state, and then just dealing with the energy, the new energy of the new reality state, Be proactive Mm -hmm. in the way that when you're in your old reality state and there's this huge question mark in what that next step looks like, set intentions for what you want the next step to look like. Now, this is really important. Don't set intentions for what you want the house to look like or what position you want at what company you want. You're going to really limit yourself when you Mm -hmm. get way too specific and you focus on the physical reality, right? right? Because we have no idea what opportunities await for us or how it can show up, right? Or, or how, or when it can show up. So it's really important that you set the highest vibrational intentions in more so of a a non-physical way. Mm -hmm. So I always say like, um, Say, for example, like uh, I'm changing my living situation. Uh, It would be like, I want the space uh, in my new living situation to be free. I want to be surrounded by a community of like-minded, high vibrational individuals. It's really whatever you 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 set in intentions were. You could also set an intention of like, I really want a backyard. I've always wanted a backyard. I really want that, you know? And that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And so you can ask for those specific things too, but, but try not to, to narrow it down. It's like, right. what is the vibration that you want out of this new position, this new job position? Um, what is like freedom or abundance or whatever? Yeah. How do you um, want to feel? How is it going how, to feel? Exactly. Yeah. How's it going to feel when you're there? And then you're like, oh, well, this was unexpected, but this is exactly how I wanted to feel in this rather than just going into it with all these question marks and say, I don't know what I want. I don't know where I'm going. And and that chaos energy is going to follow you into the new, uh, you know, opportunities and the opportunities are going to be full of chaos energy until yeah. you really feel comfortable and figure out what that highest intention is. And then when it comes to like, well, when do you want it? I usually always like to put the intention of in divine timing, mm. right? Because it might not be the rental house is the dream position, right? right. That, that's a stepping stone. The divine timing is something else, something beautiful is, is cultivating here. Yeah. And, uh, and one of my intentions, because we just moved, one of my intentions was I really want a place that has clean energy, right? Because, you know, it's like, yeah. some shit could have gone down in like the, the car or the house <laughs> yeah. or the whatever. Right. And so what's really cool about this house that we just moved into, of course, we moved from a small, small space to a lot of space. And that's mm-hmm. really nice. Um, is that this house was always a, it was always a short-term rental. Like, so mm-hmm. the people who lived here were never really here. Like it was never mm-hmm. really. And the neighbors actually recently told us who have been here for, you know, been in the neighborhood for 20 plus years were like, there has never once been a Halloween candy passed out at this house, right? Oh, wow. You know, and, I, and so when we got here, it was like, 
There was no blinds up. There was no, like, it really hadn't been lived in, even though it's right. an older house. It's just, it's, there's never been, which is amazing because we got to cultivate it and create yeah. it the way that we wanted. And so I told my wife, I'm like, that's it. We're going to go to Costco. We're going <laughs> to get full size candy bars and we are going to be the house to pass out the full size awesome. candy bars. You know what I mean? Because like, it's, yeah. they've never done anything here. So that's I was like, right. we're, we're doing it. We're going all out. We're doing the family thing. Cause like we've been in LA, like there's no families in Los right. you know, there's that's that's not a fa- that's not right. a family oriented place so yeah so it's been a, a really that's beautiful good. you know setting your intentions and just having it all align really magically and then you start to fully take your power back in life that's saying right. life isn't happening to me i'm the one happening to life and that's when an infinite amount of possibilities really open up and it goes back to the attachment and letting go of the attachment exactly. based on your identifiers let go of all of that and you really get to experience the fluidity of life there's a there's a, a signature that's left in consciousness where, where wherever you go and you can feel like if you go someplace like i was in saint augustine florida uh, a few months ago and we went to this platform where they used to sell slaves and the moment i stepped on this platform it, it, i mean it felt it felt like i entered a different atmosphere it was so dense and mm-hmm. dank and and heavy you know just yeah. standing on this you know that that's an emotional signature that is that comes from what was happening on that in that place you know mm-hmm. so you got to you have to be kind of aware um because you can you're creating one as well at, you know wherever you go and you may be experiencing some of what was there. So, you know, you can't, you can't be totally oblivious to those things or you can, and then they'll make a movie about you and the haunted house that you tried to live in. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's that too. Um, and they kept saying, get out. And we didn't, we didn't understand. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Um, you know, and so it, the other thing I wanted to ask you um, it, is, you know, you, you have these, you have kind of two factions in in the community that and and some of them subscribe and don't get me wrong i i i love dr stephen career i love what he's done and i love his you know the way he teaches meditations and helps people to realize there's you know that there's there's you don't need to be afraid to make contact when you set the right intention you know that that with your vibration being high you know you're 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 going to the contact you're going to make is going to match that and kind of helping people lose the the kind of xenophobia that is ingrained uh, in a lot of people which is the same thing as being afraid of other races you know it's it's a human thing i think um but you have half the community that think okay this guy's right there's no such thing as uh malevolent ets right and then you have the other half who are like no he's not right he's full of shit of course there's you know there's there's ets out there who are looking to you know take over the planet and and all this stuff and i'm like isn't there a middle place between these two why is it gonna be one or the other i'm wondering what your thoughts are on yeah totally yeah i've 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 heard the same thing like i don't do external research so i don't actually know what what kind of the general rhetoric is in the community. But what I've heard from people is, you know, some, I guess, teachers, I don't know what you would call them, leaders in the community think they're all good. Some think they're all bad, you know? Um, Of course, I've been called um, uh, the devil and like a demon worshiper, especially from the religious communities because they think that, well, aliens are demons. Um, And I, you know, I- I get the comments on my video. I'm like, what? Oh, all the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Those are the biggest trolls, actually. So, yeah. um, which is totally fine. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, of course, there's a middle ground. Like, you know, if if Greer was saying that they're all there's, he's saying that they're all good, right? They're all good. Um, if he's saying it in the context of everything in this universe is all source, therefore it's all divinely aligned and it's all meant to be, um, and therefore it's all good because it's all meant to be that I understand that um but uh, at a realistic sense there are uh, ETs who have very negative agendas and there are ET races and civilization who, who have very positive and lighthearted and unifying agendas um and 
uh, this universe, because there are many universes, but this mm-hmm. universe in particular is a dualistic, binary, right. polarizing universe. So even what's happening on planet Earth is just a very small percentage of what's happening out there in the rest of the universe. Right. And so it's important for us to take a huge step back from the chaos that's ensuing here and realize that there is also all of right. that happening everywhere. And uh, I don't know if you can hear my stomach growling. Sorry about that. Um I didn't and hear it. So, it's okay. We're going to let you go eat soon. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, and so the so I had a conversation with Source, uh, you know, many years ago, and I asked Source this question of, "All right, so why is there so much suffering? Mm-hmm. Why is there so much negativity?" And the response that came back was was really cool. Um, Source responded with, "Well, Elizabeth, I want you to think about in your own life having access to everything." Uh, whatever it is that you want as a human, access to all material goods, access to all of the friendships, all of the family members, access to all of the knowledge, everything that you could ever possibly want, you have. And Source said, uh, how long would it take you to get bored? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, not very long at all. If you have yeah. everything, you're at a complete standstill. Yeah. And uh And so that's why source in this universe decided to create itself in lesser life forms with less knowledge, less information to create that polarity, to create the challenge, because what challenge does, what suffering does, it creates learning and what learning does, it creates movement. You're always gaining access to something. And, you know, what I've uh, channeled is when we go through all of the different dimensions as a, as a soul in different, many different incarnations, and we learn everything that there is to learn through each of these dimensions. And we Mm -hmm. thus clear all of the other karmic energy that we've cultivated and created and we get down to the 12th dimension the last dimension and we've lived through everything experienced everything learned everything cleared everything we have a choice to make and the choice that we have to make is do we want to go back to source the original source in this universe and you know go back to this oneness um, indefinitely or do we want to go ahead and become our own source and create our own universe and, yes. um, you know, and then and then most likely the choice in creating our own universe is, well, this is great. And I have uh, all that all that there ever is and ever was. Right. But, you know, let's go ahead and 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 re-experience things from right. from from day one, you know, from kindergarten. And I know that that's what I would do very naturally, just thinking about it as a human. Yeah. Uh, th- so this is so crazy because you're the first person who I've ever heard uttered the thoughts that I've had about the universe and and all the universes and and what we're doing and how, you know, I I just, I have all these, I don't, ideas and visions of of humanity and, and, and where we're going and, and, and as we keep going, you know, we'll, we'll venture out into space and, you know, we'll be the ones in the quote UFOs and, and we'll be looking down and, and, deciding how we can contribute in a way that is meaningful, you know, without screwing things up. I'm sure we'll, our history of screwing things up will be even longer than at that point. But, but I, I, I always thought to myself, you know, I think that at the end of it all, then, then we get to be, instead of an individuation of God, a, you know, a larger manifestation of, of the God that we are all part of, you know, and in that comes the create the, the the creation, like the universal creation. And so when I heard you say that, I was like, oh my God, you know, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone else say kind of my, what I've, what I haven't really shared with anyone, but what my thoughts are about kind of when we get there at, at the end of the, yeah. of the road, if you will. So it was so cool to hear you say that. And I'm, and then to have it come out of this conversation organically was even better because I totally forgot to ask you about it. <laughs> divine so cool i i listen i'm gonna let you go eat in five minutes i only i only have one more um question for you and it's one of my favorite questions to ask but i'm excited about your answer so we've been talking about programming we've been talking about how one of the things that we have to do you know as as human beings most of us anyway is figure out what the best code is that's going to give us the most expansive expression of ourselves right and um you're a wonderful provider of of in my opinion i think of 
of, of code for people to begin to put into their software, you know, and, and operate with. And so if you had the opportunity to give people a little, you know, oh, if you could write a few lines of code and kind of, you know, put it into the, the minds and suggest it to, let's say everyone went to sleep at the same time on the planet, you know, what, what was, they could wake up with something that, um, you know, would be something that affected the, the way they looked at everything. What, what would you, what code would you write? What would you tell them? Yeah, it's a great question. Of course, there's lots of <laughs> different codes and information. I would say the number one that is most important, the, the, if, if anyone were to take anything away from this conversation in a tangible, applicable, revolutionary type of way, um, it would be, of course, setting an intention, but the intention would be freedom. That's the code that I would, if I could write some sort of computer code, Morse code, DNA code, to help everyone embody freedom, that's what it would be. That, that's number one, that would be the greatest intention that I would tell everyone to start to apply to their lives. And of course, what I say, um, it could just bounce off people. It is up to them at an individual level to really uh, say, okay, cool, EA, I'll go ahead and I'll set the intention for freedom. But, but you as an individual have to take action on that code or else the code is completely irrelevant. It doesn't even apply to you if you don't want it to apply to you. And so um, this energy of freedom, freedom, once again, financially, freedom in your time, freedom in your schedule, freedom to speak your truth, um, you know, freedom uh, in your day to day lives, freedom to uh, expand your consciousness and vibration, freedom of the matrix, freedom of the system, freedom of programming, when you start to set the intention of freedom, don't be surprised if friends start dropping out of your life, if your job is taken away from you, you know, and, and when these moments happen, we have to go back to the initial intention of freedom. Mm -hmm. I asked for this. And although you may not realize in the moment because you think life is happening to you that, oh, my, my boss fired me and oh, this is the worst case scenario. You actually don't realize in that moment of reaction that those things, those people, those situations that are dropping like flies are actually not allowing you to live your freest, your highest vibrational, your best life. So if you wake up every day and set an intention for one thing, I would say it's freedom. It took me three years of setting that intention almost every single day to get to a point in my life right now where I can fully completely indefinitely say that I am free in every sense of the word, you know, and it, and it brings me to tears almost every day when I think about how grateful I am. And, and, and it wasn't um, a guru who got me here. It wasn't a person or, uh, you know, some sort of offer or opportunity. It was right. me. It was me. And I put in the hard work and I made the changes that needed to be made. And I, and I, and I had the realizations that I needed to have um, in order to get myself to this place where I can officially say that I'm free. And it's always a work in progress. And I'm always doing the checks and balances. And I'm always keeping accountable to myself. Um, and, it, and it is a work in progress, always, indefinitely. But freedom, if, if you're going to ask for anything, yeah. if you're going to take anything away from this conversation, if you're going to implant a seed into your soul that is going to change your life forever, it is wake up every day and make the statement, I am a free and sovereign human being of planet Earth, and I deserve to receive whatever it is to raise my vibration to the highest level, you know, and, and we need yeah. to realize that freedom can be applied to the physical and the non-physical world. It is, right. it's, you know, it doesn't just have to be a uh, freedom in your vibration and right. to speak your truth. And in spirituality, we can live our best human lives as well. And you Absolutely. deserve to access freedom as a human. Um, and, and once again, you know, don't be surprised if a lot of things start shifting after right. you ask for that. I mean, if you be really, ready to go with the flow, 
Yeah. And, and, and no expectations, no attachments, because you have no idea what freedom looks like if right. you've actually never really truly had it, you True. know, freedom of your identifiers, freedom of your own conditions and constraints right. and rules and regulations. Um, and so that's, that's, that's it's absolutely beautiful. the number one thing um, that I would recommend. Oh, I, I, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's beautiful. It's so well said. It's, uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's perfect. So that, Thank you so much for your time, Elizabeth. Um, this is incredible talking to you. I'm, I really, I know how busy you are and uh, you know, your schedule and all that. So I appreciate you making time for, for me and for coming on the podcast. It was so cool talking to you. I love all the stuff we're talking about. Um, you know, people can call us crazy all day, but <laughs> it, was, it was a blast uh, and I'm grateful for your time. And I wish you the best uh, in your new house with your wife. And, and I'm sure I'll be in touch. I'll be you know, following along and watching, enjoying your videos. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I definitely had a blast today. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, th take care. And I'll be in touch with the, all the info that you need about it for the premiere and all that jazz. You know how it goes. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye.